Hey everybody, thanks for stopping back into Dad's office. So today, the question is going to be, how does your bug out bag stack up? So, I'm going to go ahead and show mine, which is very large. Um, and basically, this is going to be like the max setup or load out, if you will, um, if I were to actually, come on, come on, Jay. go, if I were to actually have to bug out, then, uh, unfortunately, I would probably drop a lot of this gear, um, and only keep the essentials, really, to be lighter weight, but, Thankfully, we're not having to do that just yet. It may come to that, but until then, I'm going to run a heavy pack. So, I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. However, I think it's probably going to end up being pretty long. So, stick with me. Um, you'll definitely get to see some premium, premium gear and... Uh, some really nice stuff and a lot of it we're just going to show and then we'll go more in depth later um, if I went through every single thing and explained every single little thing here we'd be here all day and I don't have time for that and I'm sure you don't either so let's go ahead and get into it first of all um, as you can probably see you may already know this is going to be a VanQuest Markor 45 pack which is an outstanding pack. Um, I really like it. <clears throat> it's very durable, very adjustable. Um, it rides well. It does have the the polymer uh, hard insert in the back. So I mean, it can carry quite a bit of weight um, right now in its current configuration. It's right about 41 pounds. Um, and that's with all the gear and tools and everything just as it sits which like I said that is very heavy and I would drop a lot of this gear if I were to need to um, but very capable um, like I said not gonna go into every single thing really in depth right off the get-go uh, we will do some more videos on that later so I guess we'll just start hopping into the gear because I want to know how your bug out bags uh, stack up. I mean, I think I've got a pretty, pretty good one set up here, so uh, so we'll see. So jumping right in, of course, as everybody can see right here, everybody's gonna recognize that. Of course, the uh, cold steel Spetsnaz. Special Forces Shovel, which would be one of the very first items I would drop if need be. And then next, you're going to be your S-Wing, what do they call that, a sportsman's hatchet or sportsman's axe, I think they call it. And that's just a little custom Kydex deal I made for it. I'm not even done with it. But I just wanted to put it in there for the video. So there's that. Both of those excellent tools. So here, of course, as you can see, by that right there, I'm sure you can guess what that is going to be. Obviously, that's going to be a very comprehensive med kit which we will get into like I said at another date um, but I mean it's gonna have everything in it you know tourniquets bandages you name it all the way down to the band-aids even but one nice thing about this pack it does have this little beaver tail type design which can be uh, changed around as a weapon carrier and yeah you won't see any fire breathers in this um, particular setup here 
uh, and some things you may not see in this bag that you would probably think should be because I'm not including my EDC into this bag. Um, I probably EDC more stuff than what I really need to, but anyway, so the way I've set this up um, is, you know, if for some reason you do need to use this medical bag, with this still attached to the pouch, I've made it so it's quickly rip away um, so you can take it where you need to go. But it, uh, it's on there pretty good. This VanQuest, VanQuest stuff is pretty good. I mean, it ain't coming off of there. I'd like to bust that open, but if I do, it'll just be everywhere. So... That's, here's one thing about, you know, this pack. You can switch this around, and this is that beaver tail setup that you can drop down, you know, as a, as a weapon carrier. And it's also got the little cam locks here that, you know, you can lock your shovel in or your hatchet or your knife or, you know, axe, whatever you like. So that's a pretty cool feature, I thought. And then also here we have the Velcro map pocket, which as you can see, there's a map. And what else do we have in there for nice, quick, easy access? We have, looks like a poncho. Some little uh, wipes there. Those are always nice to get too easy. So that's all I've got in that pocket for now. Nothing too major in there. All right, that takes care of part one. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. And then you'll see you got your horizontal rows here, and I've got another little cam lock there, but you know, you can also use that for lashing, you know, to lash um, whatever again, you know, shovels, axes, whatever kind of tools you like. So then we'll jump over here to this side. This is actually, this is a Maxpedition um, pouch. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a water bottle pouch. And it is very big, actually. I mean, this is a Grail Ultralight, which is actually smaller than what I thought it would be initially. But, I mean, it's still pretty good size, though. Um, and I do have several water purification options in this bag, but I wanted to have the Grail because it does do virus, whereas the rest of them do not. So I thought that was a very, very good option to have. So we'll set that aside. But also, this pouch is big enough. This is one of the big 48 ounce Nalgene. And you can see, I mean, it fits in there no problem. I mean, you do have to have it unzipped and expanded, but, I mean, it fits in no problem. Retains, good to go. So, nice little, nice little pouch. And behind it here, I don't think I really have too much. Just, uh... Just a little K-bar knife and fork that way it's nice and easy access you know in case you come across anything you gotta eat real quick like you never do know so that's that one now this one we can open and kind of get into a little bit on the outside pocket here got the little pro knot book because you know I know most of these knots, but it never hurts just to have a reference. You never know. You might be groggy or whatever and maybe not remembering everything. So good to have a little reference reference there. Um, 
like I say, we're not going to go super, super deep in depth into this, but this is one of the VanQuest uh, FTIM uh, maximizers, I believe they call that. And that stands for Fast Totally Integrated Maximizer, which they're cool. I mean, because you can have them zipped up and you can just go right into it really quickly. So... All right, first of all, in this pouch, it's going to have the Olight Parent Mini, or not, yeah, Parent Mini, yeah, Parent Mini headlamp. Nice little, uh, nice little unit. I really like that, so set that aside, and that's, that's right on the top. I keep that right there so you can just flip the top right open. And you can get to it immediately, so I do like that aspect. Um, continuing on, Leatherman Signal. And then here, which you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of redundancies on things, because like I said, this is a full loadout, so you know, in a bug out type situation, like I said, I would drop this some of this gear or disperse it you know to other people and that's that's kind of the thing I'm carrying quite a bit of gear because I'm not the only one I'm carrying for so um, kind of have a little bit of redundancies but there you've got a little ferro rod with one of these one of these little multi-tool type deals in there for the for the striker so not a bad little not a bad little setup there. It's all right. Got a little bit of bank line there. Um, that's going to be the uh, parent charger. Just keep it right in there. Okay, opening this thing up. And then right there you'll see another Olight i5T. Keep nice and accessible. And then on this side, the uh, S1R Baton 2, which is a good little light. Little thousand lumen light, no big deal. Hopefully that's not washing out or messed up the camera. I probably shouldn't have done that. Actually, I probably should have turned on some lights. I don't know if you can see everything fine or not. Let's turn on a little bit of light. See if that'll help anything. Maybe it'll make it worse. No, I think that'll make it better. Yeah, I should have done that to begin with. Sorry about that. So anyway, moving along here, spending too much time. So, of course, the Corona sharpener, uh, ferro rod striker, whatever you want to. Whatever you want to use it as, uh, I definitely have better sharpening options in here than that. Um, out here, a little bit of go toilet paper, a little bit of bug spray, a little bit of sunscreen. Right here on the outside, nice and easy to get to. And then here, a little Bic lighter and this little uh, plastic waterproof container. I thought I had a pen in here, but I guess I don't. I have them elsewhere. Here we have a little OtterBox detailing kit, which just has some little tools and like uh, some of the little wipes and brushes and like little picks and a microfiber deal, which is nice because you can use it for glasses or optics, you know, binoculars, whatever, you know, anything like that. Uh, your flashlights, whatever, you know, just, I don't know, it's lightweight, it's kind of nice to have, um, you can use the, uh, container to make char material if you needed to, so, I mean, just, just handy to have, and, uh, right in the rain, notepad, and that's going to be pretty much it for this pocket here, so, and of course, these pockets are all attached with Molly, so if you wanted, you could uh, you could remove these fairly easily. I'm not going to show that, but I'm sure you all know how that can be done. So 
So that's basically kind of what I call my tool bag. That was all I had in there. Okay. That's basically what I call my tool bag um, on the outside. A lot of your quick access type of tools you're going to need. Um, I don't want to forget about these over here, but I keep this over on the over on the side, and that's of course going to be part of the shelter element. So we'll get to that later. In this pack, which is really neat, it doesn't. You'll see a lot of packs that way. Of course, you got your grab handle here, but you also have grab handles on each side, which is really nice. You just don't see that typically, I don't think. And, on one of my shoulder straps here, I've got the uh, little Olight, what is this one, I, I1R2 EOS, a little, uh, little rechargeable light. I'm sure you guys are familiar. I just keep it right there on the pack strap. That way it's nice and quick and easy to get to. And then, moving around the pack here. I keep my fixed blade right there just and of course you know if it was to end up a bug out situation some of this gear would go you know to my belt or you know on my person if you will but so for now this is just sitting in here bench made Arvenzis 154 cm steel on that so Starting right off with this uh, fixed blade here. I do have other options, and of course, this bag isn't everything I have. In fact, it's barely scratching the surface. So, just to show some other options that I could go with, I mean, you know, just kind of for fun. But this one's kind of my favorite. I really like that one. I'm kind of partial to it. But, you know, other options, just to, just to name a few. You know, you've got the Ontario Blackbird SK5, another great survival knife. Or, you know, you could always go with the Cold Steel SRK, either way. Great knives. Or, which you may have seen this in another video, if not, this is a custom Kydex sheath that I made for the Ontario Rat 5. If you haven't seen that video, go watch that video. So, that's that on the outside of the bag. So, moving, I guess we'll jump right into this pocket up here next. So, this pocket up on top. Right there on top, nice and easy tourniquet, which I have another tourniquet in that bag, but this one's nice and easy to get to. Leatherman bit kit, which will work in the signal, but I also EDC a surge, so keep those right there nice and easy to get to. Also here, Got to have a little rape whistle and the I3 UV. You never know when you might need a little bit of ultraviolet light to uh, see things or for tracking or who knows what. Same with the handcuff key. You never know what you might need. There's that pen I knew that I had somewhere. Just a quick access set of batteries up here. Same with the earplugs, which I had some in here, so actually I can probably get rid of those or at least consolidate them. And then in the top here, I keep the uh, bench made. What do they call this thing? I can't even remember now. It's the uh, it's the 916, the bench made 916, but. It, uh, it's a rescue tool is what it is. That's why it's got the flat tip. It's got an opposing grind bevel and oh, it's got a glass breaker and a strap cutter. So pretty nice tool just to have right here in the top for quick access. It's 
going to kind of throw everything back where it goes, and then I'll straighten it up later. All right, so going back, going into the second pocket, this is going to be an extra pair of glasses because I do wear contacts and another another cleaning lens in there. Uh, not a cleaning lens, rather, but a cleaning cloth in there. Nice little, nice little pair of Oakley glasses there. I can't, uh, can't hurt to have backup because when you wear contacts, if you wear them, I'm sure you know how that can go. So there's that. Compass. Nothing super special. It's like one of those military type ones. It works pretty good. However, if you don't know how to use one, you need to learn because GPS and all that and cell phones and whatnot probably wouldn't be around in an SHTF bug out survival situation because if they were it probably wouldn't be a survival situation so there's that moving on down in the pocket cords another charging cable that charging cable there actually goes to my strap light but and just other various phone cords and adapters I've got uh, I've got micro USB to USB-C and then I've got USB-C to micro USB and both kinds of cables so tons of versatility there with that basically charge anything I need to a little bit of ibuprofen right there in the top easy to get to that's always a necessity Okay, moving right along, I've got a few uh, few little protein bars here, nothing, uh, nothing extravagant. Down inside, I do have some other food stuff, but this is right here on top, nice and easy to get to, just for a quick, quick protein boost. In here, <clears throat> I've got uh, some Burt's Bees. Chapstick. Oh, that might have melted. Who knows? Um, some sunscreen that's for kids. Never know. Uh, hand sanitizer. Keep it in a plastic bag in case it melts. And it looks like it might have both of them. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Glow stick up there. And when I was saying, you know, binoculars, scopes, whatever, got a nice little pair of uh, binoculars here. These are the Tascos, and they came from Walmart. I, I seem to think they were only about $16, but they're actually pretty decent. They're, you know, real good, actually better. You know, you can see further with that than I can see with my eyes, so... And then we've got the Sawyer Bite and Sting Kit. Um, now there's been claims these don't work for, you know, sucking out the venom or whatever from a snake bite and this and that. I don't know if they really work or not. Thankfully, I've never had to use it. However, I would like to have it in the event that I did need it. So that's in there. Yeah, we're taking a lot of time in this video. I got to get things moving along here. Oops, just kind of shove all this back in there. And reorganize it later. This bag holds a ton of gear. It really does. Especially if you organize it outright and I could it could be better organized than what I have it. So let's go ahead and jump into the main pocket here, which is I'm sure what everybody's wanting to see anyway. And this does feature, which is nice, a clamshell style. So you can pop that baby open. 
and you can see everything. So we'll just grab this loose stuff. This is just an extra cartridge for the Grail. And I probably could have it in a better storage container, but I kind of like that one. That way it gives you an extra bag, extra containers. I do have a few extra Ziploc bags and stuff throughout the, throughout the kit. So we're going to have some, uh, some bandanas here. That's a nice one. I like that one. Oh, it's backwards, isn't it? There we go. How about that? I like that one. That's a nice one. Let's throw that aside. And then the uh, wazoo tracking bandana. Nice. Just an old pair of gloves there. Shemog. Okay. And these are why I carry so many cables. So that's going to be the four Patriots. Uh, battery bank I guess you'd call it with the solar charging capability nice to have and then I also carry which this one's just from Harbor Freight so it's not like a high speed you know super nice solar panel however it will charge my lights and my phone and basically all my stuff that needs to be charged it'll do it but it does not have a battery it's just a direct charge so I could even use this to charge that and etc cetera, etc cetera. so either way not a bad item to have so now that we got that loose stuff out of the way we'll jump up here now this pocket actually is that second pocket from the outside it's accessible both ways so that's kind of nice jump in this first zippered pocket up here keep this little pouch and this little pouch it's just got some uh, various little tools that you know probably not gonna need too much hopefully but just like a little tape measure a little sewing kit a little pry bar some other stuff like that so just a little little tool kit there handy to have some paracord this is that uh, probably seen it on Amazon that PS cook like fire cord this stuff is great um, actually I've also got the uh, Titan survivor cord which the survivor cord has the uh, fire starting strand in it which in the survivor cord is like a wax jute and in the PS cook or kook whatever it's actually that red almost looks like a firework fuse but it doesn't burn like a firework fuse but it looks like that but anyhow I like it better than this and this one here the PS kook or whatever was about 10 bucks for a hundred foot on Amazon and the survivor cord I think it's about 20 or right around there anyway um, for a hundred foot but this does have the fishing line in it and the brass snare wire as well as the fire uh, fire strand and all that in it so I don't know gimmicky maybe but I've got it anyways so who knows just in case I guess Let's throw all that back into that pouch real quick here and then, of course, after we're all done with this, you know, if there's anything uh, I went too quick over or questions or you want to see again or whatever, you know, let me know in the comments and we can we can definitely bust it all back out. So getting into this pocket, there's a little little sheath here I just carry. That's for another component we'll get to in a little bit. And then in here, that is going to be my Baofeng, Fang, whatever, 
radio, which I can charge using my solar capabilities, so that's pretty nice. It's part of the reason why I've got so much, well, a couple, I should say so much, but a couple different solar panel kind of options. Um, as you can see there, another uh, battery charger, which is kind of big. I'd really like to get a smaller one, honestly, but I just hadn't really messed with it. I That one works, so that's what's in there right now. When I come across the better one, I'll get it. All right. Now, finally, moving into the main, main part of the bag. So, right here where uh, your hydration bladder hanger is, I've just got a dry sack. Just uh, loop through there, because, of course, you can use a dry sack for all kinds of things. So, I like to kind of keep everything compartmentalized as best as I can. So, obviously, I'm sure you can figure out what this is so yeah this is my fire kit which I do keep my silky pocket boy and a little sheath on there and then we're not going to be able to go completely through this fire kit right now it'll take too long but we will come back to it later so I just want to show you the what all is in this fire kit so of course I'm sure you're familiar with that little uh, sparky one-handed ferro rod actually it works really good I've heard a lot of people say they're junk and this and that but actually works really good um, little roll of duct tape ferro rod fat rope uh, bellows, Swiss Army, or Victorinox one-handed trekker, and then, whoops, sorry, back in behind here, oh, no, I don't, it's on the other side, uh, thought I had some tinder in there, but it's on the other side, uh, I do keep my work sharp field sharpener in here, just because this is kind of what I tend to use the most of, I would say, knife-wise, um, so anyway, in here, Mora Eldris set up in, uh, kind of a neck knife type of configuration. Oh my, Exotac Titan Lighter, Exotac Match Cap, Exotac Fire Sleeve, a little torch lighter here, um, 